As a student of law, you have probably heard of the standard of the reasonable man, the man on the Clapham omnibus, or the reasonable person. This character is a legal fiction. The reasonable person does not exist in reality. It is used as an objective standard or measuring device by which the courts can determine whether an individual acted reasonably within the context of the case being decided upon. The question, did the defendant act negligently in the circumstances, becomes, would the reasonable person have acted as the defendant did in the circumstances? From making what may have been their first appearance in English law in the case of Vaughan and Menlove from 1837, down the years the reasonable person has quantum leaped into the lives of various individuals, helping the courts to try and put right what once went wrong. One particular Scottish case, however, is credited with establishing this concept in the law of tort. The case of Muir and Glasgow Corporation from 1943. Before we look at this case, however, let's travel forward in time to another more recent Scottish case, the case of Healthcare at Home Limited and Common Services Agency from 2014. The dicta of Lord Reed and the opening paragraphs presents us with a veritable potted account of the immense significance of the standard of the reasonable person. Lord Reed. The Clapham Omnibus has many passengers. The most venerable is the reasonable man, who was born during the reign of Victoria, but remains in vigorous health. Amongst the other passengers are the right-thinking member of society, familiar from the law of defamation, the officious bystander, the reasonable parent, the reasonable landlord, and the fair-minded and informed observer, all of whom have had season tickets for many years. The horse-drawn bus between Knightsbridge and Clapham, which Lord Bowen is thought to have had in mind, was real enough, but its most famous passenger and the others I have mentioned are legal fictions. They belong to an intellectual tradition of defining a legal standard by reference to a hypothetical person which stretches back to the creation by Roman jurists of the figure of the bonus paterfamilias. As Lord Radcliffe observed in Davies Contractors Limited and Fairham, the spokesman of the fair and reasonable man, who represents, after all, no more than the anthropomorphic conception of justice, is, and must be, the court itself. Glasgow. This case involved an action for negligence, which was brought against a Mrs. Emily Alexander. Mrs. Alexander was the manager of a tea room and sweet shop, which, at the time, was located within this building. The old mansion house in Kings Park, Glasgow. On the 15th of June, 1940, there was an unfortunate incident in which six young children were injured. The allegation against Mrs. Alexander was that she had breached her duty to take reasonable care of the children. On the day in question, a group of around a thousand people, including over 650 children, were in the grounds of the mansion house, which can be seen from this video. Amongst these people was a church group to whom a Mr. George MacDonald belonged. On this particular day, it was raining outside and permission was sought to come inside to the tea room and subsequently granted at a cost of 12 shillings. Members of the church party then begun to carry their tea urn down from the small hill outside the mansion house and head for the warm and dry interior of the tea room. 
The tea urn at this time was full of scalding hot water, which had been freshly obtained from the boiler house within the grounds of the mansion. The entrance to the building and the corridor inside was found by those carrying the urn to be very narrow and they entered and proceeded in single file. At this time, there were around 12 children in the sweet shop. The previously mentioned Mr. George MacDonald let go of the handle and some of the hot water that escaped landed on six of the children. One of the children, Eleanor Muir, sustained serious injuries and her parents sued Glasgow Corporation for damages. Emily Alexander, as the manager of the tea room, was well and truly in the firing line. Lord Fankerton went on to say that, in his opinion, it had been long held in Scotland that all that a person can be held bound to foresee are the reasonable and probable causes of the failure to take care, judged by the standard of the ordinary reasonable man. The important passage in this judgment, however, lies with Lord Macmillan. He famously went on to pronounce upon the qualities of this reasonable man. The standard of foresight of the reasonable man is, in one sense, an impersonal test. It eliminates the personal equation and is independent of the idiosyncrasies of the particular person whose conduct is in question. Some persons are by nature unduly timorous and imagine every path beset with lions. Others of more robust temperament fail to foresee or nonchalantly disregard even the most obvious dangers. The reasonable man is presumed to be free both from over-apprehension and from overconfidence. But there is a sense in which the standard of care of the reasonable man involves in its application a subjective element. It is still left to the judge to decide what, in the circumstances of the particular case, the reasonable man would have had in contemplation, and what, accordingly, the party sought to be made liable ought to have foreseen. Here there is room for diversity of view, as indeed is well illustrated in the present case. What to one judge may seem far-fetched, may seem to another both natural and probable. The question as I see it is whether Mrs Alexander when she was asked to allow a tear to be brought into the premises under her charge, ought to have had in mind that it would require to be carried through a narrow passage in which there were a number of children, and that there would be a risk of the contents of the urn being spilt and scalding some of the children. If, as a reasonable person, she ought to have had these considerations in mind, was it her duty to require that she should be informed of the arrival of the urn, and, before allowing it to be carried through the narrow passage, to clear all the children out of it in case they might be splashed with scalding water. Paraphrasing, the urn was not in itself an inherently dangerous thing, and could be carried quite safely and easily by two persons exercising ordinary care. In my opinion, Mrs Alexander had no reason to anticipate that such an event would happen as a consequence of granting permission for a tea urn to be carried through the passageway where the children were congregated, and, consequently, there was no duty incumbent on her to take precautions against the occurrence of such an event. I think that she was entitled to assume that the urn would be in charge of responsible persons, as it was, who would have regard for the safety of the children in the passage, as they did have regard, and that the urn would be carried with ordinary care, in which case its transit would occasion no danger to bystanders. Agreeing with Lord Fankerton, Lord Macmillan allowed the appeal of Mrs Alexander, and applying similar reasoning, so did the rest of the judges. Lord Macmillan's statement regarding over-apprehension and overconfidence is often used by academics and writers to expand upon the reasonable person's characteristics. 
The case of Muir in Glasgow has been referred to over 150 times in the law reports since then. If, as Lord Reed pointed out, Roman jurists shared a similar concept, it is likely that this case will be referred to at least 150 times more. <laughs>